Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. My name is Noel Mills and um, I live part-time in Mississippi and part-time here in northern Minnesota. And in Mississippi we had a tree farm until Katrina came along and now about the only thing that I'm really farming is monarch butterflies. Up here in Minnesota these caterpillars come out every year and feed on the milkweed and they may go through a couple of cycles and then they head off and migrate all the way to Mexico. In uh, New Orleans, we see them when we cross the bridges by the tens of thousands headed uh, across the Gulf of Mexico to Mexico. I've been trying to save as many of these as I can because the population of monarchs over the last few years has really dropped off considerably and it's thought to be due to the fact that there's so much deforestation that's going on in the area where they are basically required to uh, winter. Uh, their numbers have to be uh, at a certain level because their body heat actually keeps them warm on the few cold nights that they have down in Mexico. So it's important to try to keep the numbers as high as possible. When you um, pick up a caterpillar, such as I've done today, if you decide you want to try to keep it, uh, looks like we have one here. Right? Now what I do is take this whole plant and just pull gently so it won't be bounced off. Look at the milkweed plant that it's on and be sure that there's no spiders, assassin bugs, uh, no spider eggs or anything that you think might be able to damage this caterpillar. And uh, once you've done that, put this milkweed in a bottle of water, which will keep it the longest, and um, let him eat. Now the problem is you're going to have to replenish this every day or two because these leaves do tend to wilt. And so if they start wilting, you would like to change to uh, new lettuce, so to speak for the caterpillar. It's really neat to see the caterpillars when they change within, oh, a minute and a half from a caterpillar to a chrysalis. I have a place that I put them in that they will be free from any pests getting them as long as I'm careful not to introduce any when I put the uh, plant in. And uh, I just let them do their thing and feed them. And then once you, they become a chrysalis, if they have been drilled by an assassin bug or some type of um, predator, there's not too much you can do about that. But you can put them out next to your flowers here in the garden and just enjoy the fact that you'll get up in the morning, especially if it's a summer day, if it's a bit warm, you will find that they are actually coming out. And I think like yesterday, we had four all at once just come out. And this boy, he, he's gonna have his birthing day tomorrow. If you look carefully inside, when they turn dark, you can actually see the monarch pattern's wings uh, when he's ready to go. And he'll take his bottom foot and uh, <clears throat> start a hole and just tear it open as if you would a cellophane envelope and away he goes. Now when these make a chrysalis, he'll have to be about three times larger than what he is now. You'll notice that there's a point that he stops eating and he starts traveling. And he'll go up and down, up and down, and he'll be looking for a place. And you can put some sticks into your little uh, caterpillar area or to uh, give him something to hang on to if you want to. Uh, but anyway, he will spin enough web so that his posterior end is actually stuck to a leaf or a twig. He'll form a J shape and hang there and then he will begin to take off his sweater, so to speak and he takes it off from below up and there'll be all of this skin will be up at the top uh, where he's stuck 
it actually it comes from the head up to right up where he's stuck onto the uh, twig. That'll fall away, and after that falls away, what you'll see is this gorgeous chrysalis with the little gold marks on it. All of the species, no matter what it is, fits into nature at one point. Monarch caterpillar is something that's probably been here more than 10,000 years working on these milkweeds for us. And um, wouldn't it be interesting to know uh, how he knows to go to that same 40 acre forested area in Mexico? What's in his DNA that allows him to do that? Unless one is really committed to doing the things properly, choosing the right kind of plant, these don't eat lettuce from the refrigerator, they don't eat other types of weeds, milkweed is it. So unless one is really serious, it's best to just leave the caterpillar on the milkweed. He'll fill up and he'll find a place to make his chrysalis and go from there. I do just a very small part. It may or may not be significant, but it's fun, it's interesting, and um, this is really a jewel of nature when you see one of these apple green jade chrysalises with the little gold dots on it, or you see these striped uh, beauties that are chomping away at the milkweed and um, filling up so they can turn themselves into a chrysalis. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org. If you have segment ideas pertaining to North Central Minnesota, contact us at legacy at lptv.org. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund by the vote of the people on November 4th, 2008.